it is not good for the man to be alone. Having the right kind of friendships or relationships is often an underrated addition to our lives because it can give us an edge and various advantages throughout the journey of life. The company we keep can determine our character and generally how our lives turn out. The Lord must have wanted us to understand the critical importance of companionship, so from the beginning we see something unique in the entire creation process. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, New International Version Facing life with the right company enhances our lives and empowers us to take great strides and achieve critical purposes that eventually advance us on the path of destiny. Jesus also understood the importance of this, so he chose twelve disciples to walk with him and learn the truth he had for the world. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. Luke chapter 6, verse 12 through 16, King James Version. These men walked with the Lord, heard his teaching firsthand, observed and learned from him, till they were equipped to carry the message of salvation to others, this truth that has now spread throughout the world and has endured for over 2,000 years. When Jesus was leaving the earth, he promised the Holy Ghost to the disciples on the day of Pentecost because they would need a companion that would be with them at all times. This is how important relationships are. The fellowship they started to have with the Holy Spirit empowered them for unseen exploits that was a marvel to all. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. And they called them, and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered, and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them, because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. And being let go, they went to their own company, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, Lord, Thou art God, which hast made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Acts chapter 4, King James Version The influence of these people with the same faith was so significant that nobody could deny that something extraordinary was happening. Being with the right company gives us boldness and equips us to achieve much more than we could as individuals. If the disciples were not united in one company, it would have been practically impossible to withstand the onslaught from the authorities opposing the message of salvation they were preaching. They were threatened to stop calling the name of Jesus, but they received grace for boldness by coming together to encourage and pray for one another. That is the power and effect of walking the path of life in the right company. Unity is one of the core strengths of the right relationships, and the power of unity can never be belittled. The scriptures tell us about the unity that exists in the Godhead. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, King James Version. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, 
and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, King James Version. Remember unity from the men who tried to build the Tower of Babel? They were in the company of those who believed great things were possible and agreed on one colossal plan. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 through 2, and 4 through 6, King James Version. When there is unity and good relationships, there can be a harmony of purposes and pursuits. Eventually, this impacts everyone positively. However, being in the wrong company can hurt a person so much that it causes them to be limited, derailed, or even wholly shattered. Just the way the right company or relationship can protect, preserve, advance, and benefit our lives in so many ways. The scriptures show us different positive relationships that are worthy of emulation. 1. Moses and Joshua Joshua was one of twelve spies that Moses sent to survey the land God had promised the Israelites. He eventually became his right-hand man and personal assistant. Joshua even followed Moses up the mountain as he went to receive the Ten Commandments from God. His service, obedience, fierce loyalty, and dedication to Moses was unparalleled. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And, behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. Exodus chapter 24, verse 13 through 14, King James Version. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, King James Version. Then came Amalek, and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone, and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 through 13, King James Version. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man, and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Enviest thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? Numbers chapter 11, verse 26 through 29, King James Version. It was this devotion to duty and commitment to the right relationship that birthed greatness in Joshua. As Moses counseled him, the excellence he required to step into his master's shoes and take the children of God through to the promised land came. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am a hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, 
Thou shalt never go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did unto Sihon, and to Og, king of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1 through 4, King James Version. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9, King James Version. The truth is being in the right company or with the right person can bring a lifetime of blessings, especially if we maximize the opportunities that life presents. Another value-adding relationship we will examine is that between Paul and Timothy. Paul, who was previously responsible for arresting believers, had become saved after a dramatic and supernatural encounter with the risen Christ. He was eventually integrated into the company of the early believers, and he started to make so much impact that he practically overshadowed those disciples that actually walked with the Lord while he was on earth. It was in this new line of duty as a preacher of the gospel that Paul met Timothy, and it turned out to be a divinely orchestrated relationship. Then he came to Derby and Lystra, and, behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed... But his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for us to keep, that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith, and increased in number daily." Acts chapter 16, verse 1 through 5, King James Version. The testimony of the people around Timothy must have impressed Paul, so he immediately took the young man to go with him, and from the onset, their ministry was marked by great results because the churches they visited grew tremendously and were established. Timothy served Paul so well that he became not just an aide, but a son. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, and verse 18 through 19, King James Version. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from the God, the Father, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands." To Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1 through 6, King James Version. Paul taught and mentored the young man Timothy to heights of spiritual maturity till Timothy never failed in his responsibilities of being a teacher of the word. Together, they formed an enviable team that advanced the frontiers of the gospel in their generation. The Lord, who sees the hearts of all men, has promised to not only give us wisdom, but also his Holy Spirit to be our guide, will lead us to the right relationships if we lean on him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, and I thank you for your love and mercy over me. Thank you for the gift of people you have ordained to sharpen me. Please grant me the wisdom and discernment required to choose only those who will add value to me and not hinder or destroy your purposes. In Jesus' name, I have prayed.